Hey there, everyone. Mr. Font here. Uh, this is going to be our first of two mini lessons here about mitosis. Okay, so I just want to go over some of the terms that we've already covered a little bit with our uh, flashcards, as you've already taken some notes on. So if we take a look at this, um, what I'm showing here, over here on the left-hand side, this giant axle structure, this is what we're gonna be calling a chromosome. Chromosomes usually, typically, have this giant X-looking structure just like this. And what this is, image here is actually showing is that as you unravel it or kind of zoom in to look and see what is this chromosome actually made up of, it kind of looks like this long, twisty, turny, curvy, kind of like if, if you're familiar, maybe I'm aging myself here a bit, like those old uh, corded telephones, you know what I'm talking about? Like those old corded ones. That's kind of what it reminds me of. It is literally do uh, just kind of wind up like this. Uh, and so as you unwind them, what you see is you get these little purple spheres and ultimately unwind, unwind, the little blue thing that's unraveling here, that's the DNA. So this is how our DNA actually gets packaged within our cells is within these chromosome structures. So if we repackage it, here's our DNA, package it up, package it up. It goes into these protein little structures. And this is when we know it as chromatin. And so this would have these uh, eight protein structures right here, call them histone proteins. So they get wrapped up with these histone proteins and eventually coiled together. So this telephone looking structure right here, this is what we call the chromatin. So it goes from DNA, gets wound up in proteins. Now it's considered chromatin. And eventually the whole giant uh, telephone cord looking thing here, gets all wound up into this giant X looking structure, which we know as a chromosome. So these uh, are two of our first terms, chromosome and chromatin. So I wanna talk about chromosomes here for just a second. Maybe you know the answer, maybe not. Uh, do you know how many chromosomes a human actually has? Well, there are actually, it's presented in two different ways. There's two different answers, um, but they both mean the same thing. So first off, you can say that humans are composed of 23 pairs of chromosomes and a pair comes in two, right? Pair meaning two. So 23 pairs or 46 in total. So there's technically two different ways that you can say the same exact answer. Don't be surprised if you see you know, some scientists saying one way or sometimes scientists saying the other way. Um, so they're both correct answers. Either 23 pairs or 46 in total is what we have. But now here's an interesting question. Okay, so if humans have 46 total chromosomes, 23 pairs, do all living things contain the same amount of chromosomes? Like for instance, I'm staring at our banana tree, our lovely banana tree here in the back room, as well as all of our other plants, and maybe you've seen a, a few flies flying around. Do all of those other living things contain 46 chromosomes within their cells? Or maybe do they have slightly different numbers of chromosomes? Well, I got a few examples here. Uh, I'm gonna show you in just a moment here. So this right here is what we call a karyotype. So this is all of our 23 pairs. You can see there are listed in pairs. So like here's the first pair of these nice yellow ones that kind of well, making some funky shape over here. The second pair looking almost like parallel lines. The third pair kind of looking like a capital letter K. So here's all 23 of our pairs. And nice enough with these karyotypes, they do number them, which is you know nice and easy to go ahead and find them. However, if you notice, if you go all the way down to the bottom, 22, and then it stops. There's no 23, but technically this is the 23rd pair, but they don't number it as a 23rd pair. What they use instead is X and Y. Now, maybe you know what that means, maybe not. That's okay. We're gonna talk about this 23rd pair a little bit later down the road, but just know that this is in fact the 23rd pair, even though they didn't number it as a 23. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. This right here, maybe you've seen this before, delicious fruit. I had uh, a magnificent tree in my backyard growing up of one of these. It's called the mulberry tree, mulberry bush, right? So they produce these delicious, actually this little, uh, this little pink red looking one in the back. Oh, those are delicious. nice and sour. I like them sour. Um, this kind of darker looking color one right here, this is a little bit more ripe, a little bit more sweet and juicy, that one is. So this mulberry here, Let's see how many chromosomes that it actually has. I, actually, take a second and, and maybe think and maybe kind of relate it to, maybe do the number of chromosomes have anything to do with how complex 
of a creature, how complex of an organism you actually are. So if humans have 46, what about a tree? Do you think a tree might be more or less complex? Should I have more or less DNA or chromosomes as they package them into? Well, if we take a look at the answer, actually mulberries have 38 chromosomes. And I've got a few other examples here as well. Coyotes, maybe you've seen one of these guys before. I actually ran into one not too long ago around here. Um, actually have 78 chromosomes. So wait a minute, okay, mulberry trees have 308 chromosomes. The tree, 308 chromosomes, wow, that's a lot. Uh, coyotes, 78, here's something interesting. Maybe if we take a look at the evolutionary history between coyotes and dogs, they both have 78. Maybe the number of chromosomes has something to do with their evolutionary history. So coyotes and dogs might have some sort of common ancestor between the two of them. Maybe that's why they have 78 chromosomes apiece. But then why would the mulberry tree have 308? That just doesn't seem right. Um, a fruit fly, last but not least, down here. So a little, little tiny fruit fly, or some people call them gnats. So these little buggers down here have only eight different chromosomes. So what's going on here? Why would the number of chromosomes be so vastly different for all the different, uh, different life forms that we have on this planet? So this, we're going to be asking these questions and hopefully digging up some answers. So I have a few other things I want to show you with some karyotypes. So the first one, why is it important to study chromosomes? Why is it important that we actually well, care about this? Well, let me give you an example. Take a look at this karyotype right here. So here's all the 23, 23 pairs. And that 23rd pair, again, X, Y, they didn't number it as 23, but that's the 23rd pair. And do you notice anything different about this karyotype? If you had a keen eye, you would notice down at the bottom on the 21st, it's not in pairs. It's actually in a triplet. There are three chromosomes that are located at the 21st location. And this is actually what we call trisomy 21. This is the technical definition of Down syndrome. So Down syndrome, this is a condition that can be caused by just altering and adding one additional chromosome. So instead of the 46, now you have 47. So you've altered your chromosomes and it actually has a huge impact. I'm not sure if you've ever met any, any individual who, who has Down syndrome, but it does cause a number of physiological and mental disorders within the individual. And all we did was add one additional chromosome. So why is it not okay to add one additional chromosome to a human, but coyotes and dogs and mulberry trees, why can they have more, but we can't have more? Because then we have all sorts of genetic disorders. You know, what's going on here? Let me give you one more example, something interesting. Here's one more karyotype. Take a look at this one, see what we see. And again, if you use your keen eye, if you take a look at the 13th location right here, you can see it's not in a pair, it's in another triplet. So this is known technically as trisomy 13, or it's known kind of more common name, it's called Patau syndrome. So this is another type of disorder that is caused by simply doing nothing more than adding one additional chromosome. So again, instead of having the original 46 to be considered a human being, now you have 47. And ultimately you end up with this Patau syndrome, which could cause some physiological differences within the individual as well.